I've got a linear standard output transformer that's driving the grids. And I've just got a um, regulated DC supply, which uh, is only able to put out about 28 to, well, it's a little more than that. It's probably about 35 volts. But it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be quite enough to keep the, uh, the tubes under control there. So I have to roll back the plate supply because it's a common plate supply between the grids, uh, sorry, the um, plates of the 813s and the uh, plates of the 833s. The power supply is variable from uh, nothing all the way up to uh, nearly 4,000 volts. I think about 3,600. And uh, it's this big uh, 240 volt variac on the primary of the power transformer. And it's the kind of transformer that you find in a pole pig. So I don't think that's where this was originally. 7,200 volt center cap for the secondary with a multi-tap 240-volt primary. And so it was like dipped in this uh, plastic stuff, but it was wound in on hypercell steel. So it is, you know, of that commercial variety that I found years ago in a uh, surplus place on, down in Stanford. For 10 bucks, David, you want to move down to 90? Ten bucks for 85 pounds. Transformer. I got two of them. They were so cheap. It was a bargain. Of course, in those days, I was a teenager and didn't have the budget I had today. It just went a little further in those days. But that was... That went into one of the first big radios I ever built. Well, the first big radio I ever built was this one that I'm talking about. And it's been morphed a few times. The original modulators were 806s. But one of the filaments burned out and I wasn't able to uh, find a replacement for it. Those are really scarce tubes, 806s. But they were like uh, 250 watts plate dissipation triodes and they um, similar to 250 THs but the impedance uh, was a bit different so I had a higher impedance uh, mod transformer on that than what I wound up with for this 33 thing but I uh, rebuilt the modulator into the 833s later on, and I had a different bias supply, but it was an old tube job. It was variable, and you could supply up to 220 volts of bias, and, and of course, the time to ID has required quite a bit more voltage than the 833s, and so that worked for that for a while, but then that thing went belly up and it just wasn't worth trying to get it working because it was an old tube shunt supply. But anyway, yep. Lots of neat stuff to play with, David, that's for sure, in ham radio. You can kind of pick the, the area you want to play in and go play. <laughs> That's what's cool about all these hobbies. Get tired of one thing and switch over to another. Okay, there, Jerry, WA2FNQ from WA1SOV.
bees. I spend uh, most of the time with the, with the ham radio. Actually, the wife is yelling at me because she says I don't do enough projects like I used to do. So, <laughs> but I don't know what else there is that I uh, that I really really want to do. So. <laughs> Find time to just kick back and, uh, and, uh, and get on the air, but anyway. Ah, uh, yes. Well, well, very good on the on the modulator for the for the four four hundred. I, mean, I remember when the, these five seventy twos. I'm probably dating myself. Five seventy twos were one hundred like fifteen eighteen dollars a piece. In the Lafayette catalog, <laughs> and I wish they were that now. Oh God, I don't know, and I should pick up a, a spare pair because I also uh, use them in the linear amplifier, the other uh, the other HF transmitter. But anyway, yeah, and. Um, And then this thing is out of a, out of a kilowatt RCA uh, broadcast rig. I've got an idea of which one it is. As soon as I get back there and look at the, uh, the uh, nameplate on top of the trash and, uh, and um, cross reference it to uh, some of the, um, the RCA. Info I have the uh, <laughs> the audio driver transformer is ridiculous. It's out of a, an RCA 10K rig, um, and I, I bought it for a buck at a flea market. Um, and I, I think I I know the transmitter it came out of because I know the guy that was selling the thing. Uh, there's a radio station down, down here on the south shore of Long Island in Nassau County, and the, um, the I guess they, they couldn't be repaired anymore. So I think this, this came out of a 10K rig. Oh man, anyway, it's a bunch of old, uh, old broadcast station radio parts in here. Well, anyway. <laughs> oh man, Pete, that's, that, that's a hell of a project over there. But, uh, you know, you learn a lot from it. I wonder how you like the Rode microphone. Um, I've looked at them and I've, I've thought, gee, I wonder. I wonder how you, uh, you find in that thing. And, um, yeah, I just gotta talk to you as you get further on the project. Um, about, you know, how, how you like each, each little, uh, piece of equipment as it, uh, as it goes off. You know, as you put things to, uh, put things together. The feedback control is interesting. I've got that um, in one of the equalizers here. I have a little barrel. David, are you still there? Uh, nine band equalizer. It has feedback controller in it. Uh, but I don't use it because <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no use for it here. But uh, the equalizer works really good. For the price, man, you can't. You can't, you can't beat that stuff. There's enough of it around here, so. I don't know how many of their little, little mixers I have. Probably about, I don't know, about seven. Yeah, <laughs> I just throw them in. Er, well, I, could, I, I need a little here, you know. Need some extra channels. <laughs> oh. Anyway, over to you, Frank. W2SDR. Gang, yeah, I'm kind of losing you a little bit there, unfortunately. Uh, 
Uh, Jerry, I want to see if David's still there. David, are you there? I have a feeling we might have lost David because of dinner. Uh, David, N9PVF, are you still there? You betcha. For another 20 minutes, Frank, over. Yeah, do you want to go up to 20? Let's, let's. You guys continue on here. Can you QSY up to uh, 3720? QSL, great one. N9 PVF uh, QSY. It may take me a few seconds to get there, okay? Okay, well, we'll catch you guys later. I'm going to move up because David has a limited amount of time, and I enjoy it this afternoon. I got it, but I'm starting to lose Jerry a little bit here, so uh, we'll see you guys later. W2SDR, and uh, I guess it goes back to Pete. Uh, W2SDR, choice one. Okay, gentlemen. Yep. We'll catch you down the logbook. Good talking with you again, David. And uh, Frank, good. It's been a while. My power a bit. N9 PVF W2 SDR. You're fine. You're right on frequency. Don't touch that DFO. I, I just, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I, I just, you know, I can't take the 10 or 15 minute transmissions. So, <laughs> you know how I get. So, you know, I got to have a conversation because time's limited. You got to eat dinner, you know, and this, that, the other thing. So, anyway, nice guys, though, that's for sure. But I am QSY running about. The same amount of power, shame on the 300, about a limit, legal limit, really. See, and plus the fact I'm ready for another cocktail, and I just kept hanging on and hanging on here, so. There you go. So I hope you're hearing me okay. Why don't you make a transmission? I can listen. I have another uh, receiver. I can listen on the uh, my little tra receiver here while you make a transmission while I run upstairs. So why don't you make a transmission? Make it a couple of minutes. And uh, I want to get definitely do these Negronis. So uh, if you can make at least a two-minute transmission or two and a half, I'll be I'll be back and I won't miss a word. Uh, N2 N9 PVF W2 SDR. Three again. What's the frequency? Like I said, you're perfect. Don't touch that VFO. Thank you. W2 SDR N9 PVF. <clears throat> Well, it was a uh, actually a difficult book to get from the library. In the whole state of Massachusetts, according to the database, there was only one. And uh, well, where was it? <clears throat> Not Newport. Oh, uh, Newton. It came out of the Newton Public Library. Uh, you know. People argue whether or not Newton is the more prestigious suburb of uh, Boston or whether it's, uh, what was the next one that come up, Cambridge or uh, Brookline or then there's always Winchester <coughs> where uh, Romney hailed from. Anyway, uh, it's okay. Yeah, I knew you were making editorial comments there and I knew he was just... Uh, uh, you know, the three-minute rule is not a bad one, and I try to keep it short. And unfortunately, I speed up what I say to try to get uh, all the information conveyed in my uh, period on the uh, on the podium, uh, which I know sometimes throws people, and I shouldn't do it. But with people that kind of know me and we're having a, a stream of consciousness, <clears throat> It makes a, you know, it works. What can I say? But I don't <clears throat> want to talk for five minutes. That's why I stuck a, uh, a pocket watch. I don't have, it's not the clock I want. <clears throat> but it tells me, okay, I'm pushing two minutes now. So it's time I let the tubes cool down. But, uh, no, I appreciate all your comments about, you know, the audio and whatever. I don't know where I'm going to go on all this. Uh, right now I'm quite... Uh, happy with where I is. 
I would love to do more uh, mods to the Blu-ray to make it sound as good as CKI's doing it, but uh, uh, I don't think the body will do it. <clears throat> Um, and I'll finish off with the uh, specs on the back of the, the Kenwood 922 says it's 120 volts at like 40 mils. And then the specs on the 746 Pro, 16 volts at a maximum of 200 mils. And so I said, well, can you damage it? And it was a bullseye um, search. So for right now, I just have one of these real old line switches that you would have on a lamp, and I'll just short the input to the uh, the Kenwood when I want to talk on the uh, 746, since it's only on the 746 top end. Excuse me, uh, the the uh, AWA top end. That's not that big a deal. They have 10 people in, and you got to wait your turn over 10 people before you can talk. Uh, otherwise, I just go over to the, the HP, uh, the HP, the Heathkit linear, and that's absolutely fine with this because it already has the uh, low voltage mod built into it. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to remember. Did you say you were making a martini, or are you were doing um, a Manhattan? Uh, I can't remember. I do want to try that Noily Pratt uh, sweet vermouth in. Uh, Oh, what is the drink Carol makes me with brandy? Uh, Metropolitan? Oh, I, I know where to look up what it is, but I can't remember the names, especially when I'm tired and I've already had a half a glass of Chardonnay, and I picked a very good Chardonnay tonight. Back to you, Frank. Uh, W2SDR and 9PVF. Okay, fine, solid. I just got back a couple minutes ago, so I didn't miss a word. I have this little FM tra band transmitter that I plug into the headphone jack and I could hear it all over my property so I plugged it into the radio so I could not miss a thing. Well I stopped at um, Total Wine today. I guess you have a, they're, they're a national thing I think. Total Wine and, and Spirits or something like they're called. And, uh, in Delaware which is very cheap and there's no tax. So I stopped there and stocked up I bought a 1.75 liter of Gordon's gin. Gin, kind of a low-end gin, which I don't mind. 1.75 of Windsor Canyon while I was there. A uh, Noily Pratt dry and a Gallo sweet. And all for 70 bucks. So I, I did really well. And um, I've never tried the Noily Pratt sweet. I understand the French... Uh, style of sweet vermouth is a little different than normal or other uh, sweet vermouths. So I've been a little hesitant to buy a whole bottle of that to use for Manhattan. So I'm very anxious to see if you make a Manhattan with that Noily Pratt sweet. I'm anxious to see what you think of it. Uh, what I've been doing lately, and I know this sounds pretty weird, but trying to downscale my spirits to see how cheap I can get and still like it. <laughs> you know, so, which I know sounds kind of weird, but they were the cheapest price on that Rittenhouse ride. So I got one of them. But I'll tell you, this, this Windsor Canadian, which is like half the price, is not bad for a Manhattan. I mean, this stuff is only $13 for a 1.75 liter, and it's not bad. Now, it's only 80 proof, not 100, like the Rittenhouse, but it's not bad. You know, because this stuff gets kind of expensive. <laughs> yeah, so we use a little bit of a different mic tonight. I think my son is listening with the best you are. This is a, a Behringer condenser mic. A B1, which works very, very well. It's only $99, and these things sound great. Uh, the, it's, I think it's the best sounding mic for the buck. Uh, you know, if you're going into a rack, of course, you need the phantom power for it 48 volts and stuff like that. It won't go <clears throat> directly into a radio. But, um, you know, it's a nice mic. Uh, I've always liked the B1s. And um, that's an interesting mic that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pete was talking about that NT4 road mic. Uh, it's 
looks like has two heads on it for stereo. And I guess that would be a good mic for a coral, uh, a coral type deal. So, well, we're supposed to get that snow tonight. I won't, I'll make it short because I know you got dinner coming up. But the Negronia, I should have got the Campari. Uh, well, I was at the store today because you know, I guess the typical recipe of that is uh, three parts gin, three parts sweet red vermouth, and three parts Campari. And I don't have any Campari. N9 PDF W2 SDR. Okay, well, I'm on total wine. I have the wrap, and it's 37 bucks uh, for the um, for the tin cup. Um, for the tin cup, um, uh, 750. You know, that's ten dollars more. Now, that's a little expensive for me for for a uh, like I said before for the uh, for a 750 milliliter. So that's thirty-seven dollars. That, that's that's ten dollars more than the Rittenhouse. And to give you an idea, it's about eight bucks for fourteen ninety-nine. I can get a one point seven five liter uh, Windsor Canadian. Now that's not. I'm sure it's not a tin cup, and it's not a Rittenhouse, but you know, it's a lot lot cheaper. And after all, it is a cocktail, so you're not sipping it. So I'm having uh, Windsor uh, Manhattans tonight, and um, they're not quite as good as the Rittenhouse, but they're way, way cheaper. So just for the point, but $37 to me is a little steep um, for uh, for me at that point at 10, because I, I I felt the uh, the Rittenhouse is borderline for me at $26.99. This is $37.99 for a $7.50. So I don't know. Maybe it's cheaper where you live. But uh, this wine place um, is usually the cheapest place around. 
uh, total wine, um, and there's uh, around the for prices, and uh, you know, really, I'm not supposed to take this stuff across state lines. Somebody told me that they pull you over every once in a while, and you can get fined. <laughs> You know, pulling like an old guy over like me and like find me for taking, you know, like a bottle across the, the bridge. You know, give me a break. I mean, it's like people murdering people left and right. They're going to pull me over and like find me. I guess, I guess they would. But, um, I think I answered just a Oh, D-104 without a preamp, a regular D-104 and a regular triple four. They're, they're for like vintage old radios, uh, you need a very high impedance, like a tube input for a D-104. Same with a triple four. They'll, they'll sound horrible on any modern radio. So don't even attempt to put those on a modern radio. Now, you can modify a D-104 by putting an FET in it, uh, you know, with a battery. Uh, it's a source follower circuit. I don't want to get too far into weeds, and that'll convert the impedance to a low impedance, but show the element of the D104 a high impedance so you'll get a good fidelity. But out of the box, they're not going to work on any kind of uh, modern radio. N9 PVF W2 SDR. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I understand they won't work, but I don't understand the transmission at
want to make it with the uh, gallo. I want to try. The, I want to try the best one because I don't drink a lot of them. And when I first had a, a martini with Bombay Sapphire gin, I thought that was an absolutely delicious drink. Years ago, my brother-in-law, before I learned that, got crocked on my expense account. <coughs> Um, I was paying for the drinks, but uh, we were just good buddies for six years in graduate school. He got crocked on uh, martinis. I tasted one of them. I wanted to spit it out. Uh, W2SDR and IPDX. Okay, solid. You've been 20 over the whole time. W2SDR. I'll make it short in case you get the dinner call. Uh, well, there's no tax in Delaware on anything. Uh, liquor, you know, food, uh, anything. There's no sales tax. So, you know, it's the same uh, total wine price, but no tax. So I saved the tax on everything. They're the cheapest. Uh, sometimes in Jersey, uh, some of these stores will match the price, but you have to pay 7% tax on top of it. So if I'm over into that area like I was today, I'll stop there. And I wish I was more of a wine aficionado. You know, they have all this wine tasting. Like, every every state now has got their own vineyards. Like, New Jersey has wine vineyards now, and they never did before. I, I didn't know New Jersey had wine, but I guess they do. And there's all these wine tasting things at these vineyards you can go to. And I, I'd like to get my learning curve up a little bit more on wine. But since it's just me, uh, David, it's hard to... Um, you know, to 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 be able to open a bottle of wine. I like the dry wines, you know, the red wines. And uh, but you know, I know you can buy those those things that you can, you know, seal it so it doesn't go bad and stuff like that. But uh, you know, I'm good for one or two glasses of wine. And to open up a good bottle of red, you know, is uh, I really hesitate to do that. I used to enjoy the uh, Coppola. Uh, Cabernet. Really like the Coppola Cabernet. You know, I can get those on sale for about eleven dollars a bottle. And uh, my wife and I used to really enjoy those. Um, but you know, ten bucks a night <laughs> to get. You know, we didn't have it every night, but still. So. But it's all fun. You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy making a good cocktail. And you'll enjoy that book. I'm, I'm sure you will. But I think I'm going to make this one my final, I think, I'll, you know, in case you get the call. So I may tune around a little bit. I don't know. Go up and get a bite to eat. I got some leftovers. I think I'm going to heat up and get ready for the snow. It's supposed to start. So I'm sure when I get up in the morning, I'll have a few inches of snow on the ground. N9PVF. W2SDR. Okay, Frank, before you go, I told you, and you may not have uh, understood me or uh, believed it, uh, the Wine Spectator in a big magazine that has all this stuff, the guy said, freeze the wine. you got to be kidding me. Yeah. So I tried up with the $20 bottle red wine, which are pretty decent California and uh, I just uh, Kenyan, Chilean, Australian wines. It's done with three or four of Freeze it. Put the coffee in and freeze it. And if the bottle's half that deal, we'll pop it and we'll do the wine instead. The only downside is it's absolutely the same. you got to give it enough time to defrost. So you have two glasses, cork it, throw it in the freezer. Whenever you want to, you pull it out again. And you also have a very good freezer, if you remember. Uh, give it enough time. You can actually tweak it with the microwave, but you got to be real careful. The only issue is you get a lot of sediment uh, after the freezes. And uh, if that bugs you, the sediment can't be wine that comes off the leaves, which is uh, you know, the, the Chateau Lafitte. And I have to uh, use a flashlight to find it. Or as much as you want to off, get a coffee filter. Put the rest of the wine in, and the wine would taste absolutely the same to the extent I can tell in these uh, bottles. And it's zero cost, so we do that. But usually, when we get a bottle of wine, two of us drink the whole thing. Let me tell you, why not?
Wonderful lineup. Here comes. This is a. Uh, oh, I don't remember the. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it, was, it was some comedian who did. He was a radio station. Wonderful lineup. Oh. Wine up. Adios, amigo. Always great to chat with you, uh, Frank. I look forward to it every night. W two S D R. Enjoy your dinner in nine PM. Yeah, <clears throat> me too. Uh, David, one question though: If you're freezing that wine, it's got alcohol in it. What, at what my freezer goes down to like ten, zero to ten degrees. Well, what temperature do you need to freeze the alcohol? Well, if it was written house, it's very cold. But ordinary wine is like ten percent plus. It'll freeze in a regular uh, uh, the freezer, so ten degree freezer, a ten degree freezer. No problem freezing it over. Okay, can you freeze that in, in the bottle? Absolutely, that's how you do it. I usually kind of tilt it at a 45 degree angle because uh, it's usually too tall for the freezer upstairs. I have the cork in it, lay it on the side. The, it expands in the open space of the bottle and uh, you don't have to worry about the, uh, the gas. Uh, um, gas? Uh, contracts when it gets cold, so I don't pop the cork. Right, fine. Uh, I haven't tried so many whites, but I know for red, I can't tell any difference. Over. That's a great idea. Okay, that's that was my only concern. Okay, because that that Coppola gets on sale. A lot of that good stuff goes on sale, and I was concerned not being able to finish the whole bottle. I'm not going to sit here and drink a whole bottle of wine. <laughs> Not <laughs> under normal circumstances. Great. Enjoy the rest of your evening, David. I, I enjoy our two shows as much as you. Let's uh, look forward to it every night. 7-3, take care, and 9 PVFW 2 SDR. Okay, Frank. Have bottle of travel. Come on up sometime. Give me a few days' notice. We'll make up the uh, back bedroom. Turn up the heat. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you can teach me about uh, mixed drinks. You, I'll take, oh, what are you going to say? You're going to make the jump to warp speed with my uh, wine cellar, I hope. Sure. We'll burn a, a Chateau Lafitte. Uh, now i got to tell my wife to go out and buy a good piece of meat. I'll show you what to do. She complains uh, when we try to decide on a uh, dinner. Take care. Um, don't hurt yourself with the social. Seven three.